I'm playing a season on every FIFA game from FIFA 14 all the way to FIFA 23, and today it's time for FIFA 16. I didn't post a poll asking which club we should manage for this game because I already knew Leicester City would be the clear winner, and it also gave us a clear objective. We'll be trying to repeat their 5,000 to 1 title win in 2016. Why would I be so excited to play as Leicester City? Well, have a look at this team. It's absolutely terrible. We've got all of their players from that Claudio Ranieri era. You've got Vardy, Mares, Kante, Drinkwater and Schmeichel, but almost all of them are rated really low. The game servers for FIFA 16 are now fully dead, so there's no way of actually getting the massively upgraded versions of the squad, which is a real shame. We'll definitely need to strengthen both our midfield and our attack, because there's no way that Andy King and Leonardo Aloha are good enough for what we want to do in this game. Let's also talk about which record we're going to try and break in this season. I think this will be the hardest one yet, because we're going to try and match and then beat Jamie Vardy's 12 goals in consecutive games. This streak was a big part of the 2015-16 season, so let's at least try and match that history on our way to the title. Okay, before we start the season, let's make some deals. We have a tiny budget for the Premier League, so let's fast forward history by signing Yuri Tielemans in 2016. It might be three years sooner than it happened in real life, but we can rescue him from that terrible spell he had in Monaco. While we're strengthening, why don't we also save ourselves some serious cash by bringing in James Madison before he joins Norwich City. As always, I played the full pre-season just so I could try and get a grip on how the game plays. This game is actually so difficult when it's compared to FIFA 15. We only scored one goal in pre-season, so Vardy's record might be hard to match. And he passes back to the keeper. He's got his shot off now. Anyway, let's start our season with a classic Premier League game against Sunderland. Sunderland have a pretty similar rated squad to us, but you know, we're going for the title, they're trying to avoid relegation. Our first goal was quite surprising, honestly, it was from Yuri Tielemans, a nice finish and definitely an upgrade on Andy King. But if you want to see how hard it is to score on FIFA 16, watch this clip. A good finish from Vardy saved, a header saved off the line, and then the offside player also having another header saved off the line. At least one of those would have gone in on FIFA 23. John O'Shea nearly kept up with Jamie Vardy as well, but we just about scored, made it 2-0, and that's how the game would end. The game kind of proved we needed to use some of this overpowered training that FIFA 16 had to try and get Vardy up into the high 70s if we really wanted to have a chance of breaking that record. If there's one team that I think is a bit overpowered on FIFA 16, it's definitely West Ham. Andy Carroll and Dimitri Payet are both so good on this game, but Tielemans will get his second goal and maybe he's the player we're going to end up breaking this record with. He's definitely in first place at the moment. We had a nice little chance here, Mark Albrighton beating a couple of players, cutting into the box, pulling it across to Marez, and he would make it 2-0. With two wins from two games, we were joint first place in the table, hoping to get a third win in a row against Tottenham Hotspur. Harry Kane was playing in this match, hoping to prove that he wasn't just a one-season wonder after his great season last year, and Tielemans nearly got three goals in three games, but his long-range effort just about missed the target. The balancing on FIFA 16 is a little bit weird. I got caught up when using Jamie Vardy with Kevin Vimmer several times despite having 30 or so more pace. This was the only time we could get away from Federico Fazio as well who has 30 pace himself. Despite the difficulties of playing FIFA 16, we were actually unbeaten after three games, joint first place with Man United, Chelsea and Man City. As always seems to happen in these videos, the more I play the FIFA game, the better I get at it and the better the results get. We destroyed Bournemouth early in September. And after seven games, we were still top of the league. The funniest thing is look who is in last place, Chelsea, with zero wins from seven games. I'm not sure how that happened, but it's still pretty funny. Look how tough it is to score on this game. We had so many chances there, but it is time to see our longest goal scoring streak of our entire season. Who do you think it was? Was it Jamie Vardy? No, it was Shinji Okazaki. That was the first one in a home game against Everton. And this next one is by far my favorite goal we scored in the entire season. He beats his man, he spots the goalkeeper off his line and he just smashes it straight over Boaz Myhill to put his one up really early in a West Brom game. After leading us to back-to-back -back wins, he also scored in this one against Manchester City. It would end up a draw, but they are one of our biggest competitors for first place in the league. Crystal Palace there with an absolute massive mistake, so we walked it in with Okazaki. That would be four goals in four games. Chelsea would be coming to Leicester next up, and Okazaki would have an early chance there, just about missing the post. It was actually proving to be quite tough to score in this game. He had another chance right here which he couldn't score. The rebound, he couldn't score. He's been so good for us though that even when he doesn't score, 
His rebounds will fall to our other strikers and put us ahead against Chelsea. Good finish that from Jamie Vardy, we just need to get one with Okazaki. He burst into the box, he would hit the post again. It was looking like this really wasn't his game and four goals was all we're going to manage. Until he does that. He smashes it in off the crossbar, it just about bounces over the line and that will be five goals in five games. He was full of confidence though, trying things like that against Norwich, it's never really going to work. Even when he's one on one, he's trying to hit it too hard if anything. Six games could be the limit. Andy King would get the ball to him though, and look at that, exactly in the corner between the top of the crossbar and the side of the post. A perfect finish. Liverpool were another one of our big title contenders, and they actually went ahead. This proved to be the hardest game of this entire streak. Lazar Markovic there nearly scoring a header which would have been a crazy situation. But speaking of crazy situations, just have a look at this. Adam Bogdan lets the ball go through his legs, which does happen quite a lot if you watch replays on FIFA 16. The ball's just randomly transporting through legs and through chests and stuff. But none of those replays were anywhere near as funny as this one. The ball just going through his legs, hitting him on the arse and then ending up in the net. This was our only real chance with Okazaki, and that means the goal scoring streak will end at six. And that's as good as we could get. The rest of the season, we couldn't get anywhere near this. We did score quite a few goals with Vardy, we scored quite a lot with Marez, and even a few with Kante and Tielemans, but Okazaki would continue to be our best player all the way through into May. But before we get any further in the season, let's have a quick look at youth scouting and how player development worked back on FIFA 16. You might think this isn't as interesting as actually playing the matches, but on FIFA 16 it was actually pretty cool. So this is how training worked, it's the same as it is now, you get between an A and an F rating, but it was totally done randomly. This is what a youth scout report looked like as well. So we're going to sign this guy here, Sonny Bassat. He's got 82 to 94 potential, he comes in really cheap, and we're going to see how overpowered we can make him in just a single season. He's going to be starting off as a 60 overall, 5 foot 5 goalkeeper who's only 15 years old. If we put him on one on one goalkeeping and throws and drop kicks every single week for a couple of months, he's going to get overpowered very, very quickly. When you think on modern FIFAs, it's a good result if you can get a player to develop by 5, maybe 8 overall in a single season. Well, it took us 6 months to get this guy from a 60 overall goalkeeper to a 72. And don't worry about his height either, because he is going to keep developing and growing in the youth academy. You can see it wasn't just youth players as well. Look at James Madison here, he's nearly grown by 20 in some of his stats. Now it's at this point of the video where I'd love to say, hey, there's a big title battle going on here. We could win the league on the last day by beating second place or something like that. We already won the league like two or three games ago. We absolutely destroyed it. But it was probably the most anticlimactic end to any season I've ever uploaded to YouTube. There was no real relegation battle. There was no title battle. There wasn't even a trophy lifting animation. All we got was this news article. I mean, what an awful end to a season. That's something that I think definitely improved from FIFA from this point onwards. And hopefully we'll be seeing a title lifted next episode and I need you guys to vote on the team that I'll be using. Let me know the teams you want me to use in the comments below and I'll put the best and highest voted ones into a poll and then you can vote on that and I will do my next season with that team no matter who it is. So thank you all for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss my FIFA 17 episode coming out the end of this week. I'll see you soon. Cheers and goodbye.